Recently I seem to be doing a lot of videos where I'm basically just showing people how I have failed to accomplish something. And this is another one. So recently I thought I was looking at finite state machines and I thought I want to make one of these. What shall I make? And I thought, well, I'll just make a, a simple traffic light system, uh, you know, red, amber, green, and then just work it through and see how it works. Now on this slide, you can see what I've done here is a truth table that says there's a timer and it's on or off. So zero and one, there's red, which is a one binary one. Then there's amber, which is a binary two and green, which is a binary four. So zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, and one, zero, zero. And then the next state, which is what it should change to on each pulse of the clock. So when the timer is zero, i.e. it's, it's not pulsing, it's red in the first example, it stays red. In the second one, the, the light, uh, the, sorry, the clock is pulsed. The light is red. So the next state is going to be amber, right? So the light goes from red to yellow on the clock pulse. And then the next one, there's no actual pulse, no rising clock. So it's on 010 or amber. And so it stays that way in that state. The next clock tick. Uh, it goes from 0, 1, 0 or amber to the next state, which is 100 or 4, binary 4, which is green. And then the green is a 0. Uh, it stays green. If it's the timer is a 1, then it reverts back to red. So basically, it just goes red, amber, green, red. And it should do this consistently on every clock pulse. Now, to do this in software is relatively straightforward. So if I were to use an EEPROM to do this, what I would do is I would have the clock and the current state of the lights. So in this example, I0 is connected to the red light. I1 is connected to the yellow light. I2 or input 2 is connected to the green light and input 3 on the right hand side is collected to the connected to the clock. And so when the clock pulses it creates a binary number. You can match that number uh, and determine what the output should be. So depending on the truth table before you just set it up with what are effectively if conditions. So if the value is of the clock is a zero, right? And the value of the three inputs is a one. In other words, it's red. Then you just output a one or red. So that is really straightforward and pretty trivial to do in C. Now, I created a Carmac, Carnock Mac of Carno map, <laughs> sorry, of this, and you can see it's basically um, when it's uh, a zero or a one, and then the states, and then you mark that as having changed, and then you group the um, the values. And you should be able to get a Boolean algorithm from that. So next state here is equal to not T, not G, A, or T and not G and not A, or T and G and not R. So that is in theory what I needed to do. If I wanted to do this with a set of logic gates as opposed to just doing it in software. Now, I didn't want to build a breadboard with all of the logic gates and all of that. So I have a program called Logism that lets you simulate um, circuits. So 
this is the circuit that I simulated and it does not work. Um, it falls, it fails on, um, uh, you know, when it, when it tries to cycle into the, the amber, it just faults there, it, it stops. And I haven't actually done enough diagnosis to figure out why this is happening. But I have to say, it's much, much easier to do this with a program like Logism than it is to try and do this in hardware first and then try and work out where you've gone wrong. Now, it is highlighting and telling me where there's errors. And so I can trace this down and try and work out what's gone wrong here. But um, the, the critical thing, I think, is basically the state is not stored anywhere. So realistically, what I need to do here is probably add some flip-flops that will let me store the state, the current state, before I try and change it on the clock pulse to the next state. So just a straightforward logic gates, this isn't going to work. I need to keep the, the, the previous state in order to um, feed it in to the next in set of inputs. Now, obviously, with the um, EEPROM, that's not required. You don't need to do that. You can just, you know, program it and it'll work. But I wanted to do this in a sort of a hardware thing rather than, or, you know, with, with logic gates rather than try and just do it in software. Um, but it's failed. I did want to put a video out this week um, and I have left it until late. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of working my way through it. And if anybody knows where I've gone wrong here, uh, other than the, the sort of flip-flops or keeping the state, let me know in the comments um, and I'll try and fix it. And maybe later I'll do a, a different video which shows it successfully working. But that's what I've been working on this week. It's taken up a fair amount of time. Uh, it doesn't look like much because it's only a few slides but in fact uh, you know the truth table and the, the k map and the boolean equations and things that's taken me a lot longer and a lot of paper um, to to try and work out so that's it i hope you enjoyed the video uh, thanks everybody who's subscribed and if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed please do so uh, you know, I'm not getting any money out of this. I just kind of like the subscriptions and the like button. So, uh, you know, let me how, let me know how you feel about that. Let me know if you think uh, you know how I can fix this so that it would work properly. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. See you soon.